Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts, because today, we're diving deep into the world of the law of reversed effort. You may not have heard of it, but trust me, it's something that affects us all. We'll be taking a whirlwind tour of this fascinating concept, exploring how the harder you try, the worse it gets. So let's dive right in. Picture this. You're lying in bed, staring at the ceiling, and you know you need to fall asleep. But the more you focus on it, the more you struggle to drift off. It's frustrating, right? Well, this is the perfect example of the law of reversed effort. It's a psychological principle that suggests that when you try too hard to achieve something, you may inadvertently sabotage your own efforts. It's a bit of a paradox, really. The harder you try, the worse the outcome. Now I know what you're thinking. Isn't hard work supposed to pay off? Well, my friends, while hard work is often essential for success, there are times when pushing too hard can have the exact opposite effect. And that's what we're here to explore. So, how did this concept come about? Let's take a step back to where it all started. It was first introduced by the French philosopher and mathematician Émile Coué in the early 20th century. Coué believed that our thoughts, beliefs, and expectations could have a significant impact on our actions and outcomes. He coined the term law of reversed effort to describe this curious phenomenon. But what does it really mean? At its core, the law of reversed effort suggests that when you're too focused on the outcome, you can create internal conflict, which leads to self-sabotage. It's like a mental tug of war between your conscious and subconscious mind. The harder you pull, the more resistance you create. Now, let's dive into some real life examples, shall we? We've all heard the story of the tortoise and the hare, right? The hare was so confident in his ability to win the race that he didn't bother to give his best effort. He ended up losing to the slow and steady tortoise. That's the law of reversed effort in action. Think about public speaking. The harder you try to remember your lines and avoid making mistakes, the more nervous you become. This anxiety, in turn, makes you more likely to mess up. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. And it's all thanks to the law of reversed effort. But the real question is, how can we overcome this? Well, the answer is both simple and complex. The first step is awareness. By recognizing that the law of reversed effort is at play, you can start to address the root causes of your internal conflict. One powerful technique to overcome this is to adopt a mindset of detached involvement. This means engaging in the task at hand without being overly attached to the outcome. By focusing on the process rather than the result, you'll be able to stay in the moment and avoid the pitfalls of self-sabotage. Visualization is another powerful tool. Instead of worrying about the outcome, visualize yourself successfully completing the task. This can help to align your subconscious mind with your conscious intentions, allowing you to achieve your goals more effectively. Let's talk about the power of self-talk too. Negative self-talk can perpetuate the cycle of the law of reversed effort, reinforcing your fears and anxieties. Instead, try to replace these negative thoughts with positive affirmations. This can help to shift your mindset and promote a more constructive approach to problem solving. Remember that the way we talk to ourselves has a significant impact on our performance and overall well-being. So let's dive deeper into the power of self-talk and how it can help us overcome the law of reversed effort. Our inner dialogue has a sneaky way of shaping our reality. When we consistently tell ourselves that we're not good enough, or that we're bound to fail, our subconscious mind starts to believe it. This creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. The more we expect to fail, the more likely we are to do just that. So, how can we change this narrative? The key is to be mindful of our thoughts and challenge the negative ones that hold us back. By consciously choosing to focus on the positive aspects of a situation, we can build a stronger foundation for success. For example, let's say you're about to take an important exam. If you constantly tell yourself that you're going to fail, your anxiety levels will skyrocket, making it even harder to concentrate and retain information. However, if you reframe your thoughts and remind yourself of your strengths and past achievements, you'll be better equipped to tackle the challenge ahead. But the power of self-talk doesn't stop there. We can also harness the power of self-compassion to navigate the tricky waters of the law of reversed effort. Instead of berating ourselves for our perceived shortcomings, we can learn to treat ourselves with kindness and understanding. By acknowledging that everyone makes mistakes and that it's okay to be imperfect, we can reduce the pressure to succeed and mitigate the effects of the law of reversed effort. 
Another essential aspect of overcoming the law of reversed effort is learning to manage our emotions effectively. Emotional intelligence plays a crucial role in our ability to navigate challenging situations and cope with stress by developing a deeper understanding of our emotions and their impact on our actions. We can make more informed decisions and avoid falling prey to self-sabotage. One way to cultivate emotional intelligence is through mindfulness meditation. By practicing mindfulness, we can learn to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment. This increased self-awareness allows us to identify and address the internal conflicts that contribute to the law of reversed effort. Now let's talk about the importance of setting realistic expectations. While ambition and high aspirations are admirable, it's crucial to strike a balance between what we want to achieve and what is genuinely achievable. By setting realistic goals, we can avoid the disappointment and frustration that can trigger the law of reversed effort. Moreover, it's essential to break down our goals into smaller, manageable steps. This not only makes the task at hand seem less daunting, but also provides us with a roadmap to success. Each small accomplishment serves as a confidence booster, making it easier to stay motivated and maintain momentum. Flexibility is another crucial component of overcoming the law of reversed effort. Life is unpredictable, and our plans don't always unfold as we expect them to. By learning to adapt and adjust our expectations, we can navigate these unexpected twists and turns more effectively. This ability to roll with the punches allows us to stay focused on our goals without getting bogged down by setbacks and obstacles. Now, let's circle back to the concept of detachment. We've already touched on the idea of detached involvement, but there's more to explore here. Detachment doesn't mean not caring. It's about finding a healthy balance between investment and acceptance. By learning to let go of our attachment to specific outcomes, we free ourselves from the constraints of the law of reversed effort. For example, let's say you're working on a creative project, like writing a novel or painting a masterpiece. If you become too attached to the idea of producing a perfect final product, you may find yourself paralyzed by fear and unable to make progress. In this case, embracing a sense of detachment allows you to focus on the creative process itself rather than the end result. By doing so, you'll likely find that your work flows more freely and naturally, ultimately leading to a better final product. One way to cultivate detachment is through the practice of non-attachment meditation. This technique involves observing your thoughts and emotions as they arise, without clinging to them or trying to control them. By allowing these thoughts and feelings to pass without judgment, you can develop a greater sense of detachment and resilience in the face of challenges. Finally, Let's discuss the power of persistence and resilience. While the law of reversed effort highlights the potential pitfalls of trying too hard, it's important not to swing too far in the opposite direction. Giving up at the first sign of difficulty is equally counterproductive. The key is to find a balance between striving for success and allowing yourself the space to fail, learn, and grow. Resilience is a crucial life skill that enables us to bounce back from setbacks and keep moving forward. By developing a resilient mindset, we can face the challenges that life throws our way with courage and determination. This not only helps us to overcome the law of reversed effort, but also fosters a sense of personal growth and self-improvement. So how can you develop resilience? One way is to practice self-reflection and learn from your experiences. By analyzing both your successes and failures, you can identify patterns and behaviors that either help or hinder your progress. Armed with this knowledge, you can make more informed choices moving forward. Another way to build resilience is through social support. Surrounding yourself with a network of positive, like-minded individuals can provide encouragement and inspiration in times of difficulty. By leaning on others for guidance and support, you can better navigate the ups and downs of life and stay focused on your goals. The law of reversed effort is a fascinating psychological phenomenon that demonstrates how our thoughts, beliefs, and expectations can shape our outcomes. By understanding this concept and applying the strategies we've discussed, you can overcome the pitfalls of self-sabotage and unlock your full potential. Remember to cultivate a mindset of detached involvement, practice positive self-talk, and develop emotional intelligence. Embrace the power of self-compassion, set realistic expectations, and stay flexible in the face of challenges. And finally, foster a sense of persistence and resilience to keep moving forward, no matter what obstacles you encounter.